This video is recorded to help my students understand the loops. In this course, we study three loops, while loop, do while loop, and for loop. In this presentation, I will use two examples to explain how to write these loops and what's the relationship between these loops. The example one, write a code to calculate and display one plus two plus three up to plus n. Example 2, write a code to take a grade's input, then calculate and display the average grade. Those are two very simple examples, but hopefully help students to understand the loop better. Now, let's see the first uh, uh, example. In order to calculate and display this uh, sum, so let us declare some variable first integer n, then sum initialize it to be 0. So we first print out, see out, ask a user into a positive integer. Then we get user's input. Now, what loop I did use? First we know, we, how can we add 1, 2, 3, up to n, we calculate this sum. So the idea is, I start with sum equals 0. Then I iteratively do the following thing. Every time I add one number to the sum, first I add 1 to it, then next I add 2 to it, then next I add 3 to it. So I need to repeatedly to do this n times. So I exactly know how many times I want to repeat this. So in this case, I will use for loop. You use for loop when you know exactly how many times you want to do your loop. So we can say for integer i equal 1, i less than equal to n i plus plus. Each time I want to add i to my sum. So sum equal sum plus i. You can write it in a short color way like sum plus equal i. This is equivalent sum equal sum plus i. Then you print out the result. See out the sum of 1 plus 2 plus plus up to n equal the sum. Now let's compile and run this program. Compile successfully. Let us test the run. We load 1 plus 2 plus up to 100 is 5050. Let's see. Yeah, it is 5050. So the result is correct. Now we can also redo this loop by using while loop. In fact, every for loop can be rewrite in as a while loop. How? If you look at your for loop, for loop head has three parts, initialization, condition, and uh, increment. The for loop works in the following way. First, the initialization will be executed. Then, the loop condition will be checked. If the loop condition is true, then the loop, loop body will be executed. After that, the increment part will be executed, then the loop condition will be rechecked, then the, if the condition is true, the loop body will be re-executed. So you see, the loop is here. After that, the increment will be done, the loop condition will be checked again. So after you understand this, then you can easily to say that the for loop can always be rewrite as a while loop if you rewrite it in the following way. First, the initialization part will be executed at one time outside the while loop. Then the while loop will take the condition as the for loop's condition. Then well, the while loop's body is the for loop's body plus the increment. Now, you see how while loop 
this part work. It first will execute this code, int i equal 1. This equivalent executed the for loops initialization. Then it will check the loop condition, equivalent check for loops condition. If the condition is true, then we'll execute loop body, equivalent execute the loop body. The loop body include this update increment, equivalent execute the for loops increment. Then we'll recheck the condition. If the condition is true, re-execute the loop body, then recheck the condition. Okay? So you can see every for loop can be rewrite as a while loop. Now let us run this code. If we put a 100 there, it will give me the same result, 5050. So we did everything correctly. This is the finish of example one. Now, let us comment away the example one, then begin to our example two. Example two asks us to write a code to take grades input, then calculate and display the average grade. Now, in this case, we don't know exactly how many, how many grades we need to input. The idea for this loop will be the same. Every time I start from the total grades, uh, total grade equals zero. Every time I have a new grade input, then I add this new grade to the total grade. After I done the input, the average grade is just the total grade divided by how many grades I have. Now the problem here is I don't know ahead of time how many grades I have because for instructor A, uh, he might have three student, uh, three students. For instructor B, she might has, uh, she might have like uh, twenty students. So the number of grades change every time. So in this case, how do I know how many times the loop will be executed? Here is the same. We can use some centennial value to control the loop, which is. Uh, for example, here, the student grade can never be negative. So we can assume if the user into a negative number, that means the user wants to end the input. So we can do it this way. First, as an integer score is one student score. Then integer count, this is the number of students. Then integer total score equals zero at the beginning. Now the count also can initialize to be zero first at the beginning, no scores. Now then we can print out the message into students scores into a negative number to stop. Then I begin into the first score. Then I check if this score is greater than or equal to zero. That means this score is not a negative. Then I know this score will be added to total score. Then I will increase my score count by one. Now let's check this loop. I ask people into a score. Then I check if this score is not negative. I will add this score to total score. Then increase my count by one. After that, I'm ready for into the second next score. Then I will check the condition again. If the next score is not negative, then I will add a, repeat this loop body. That means I will add this score to the total score, then increase the score count by one, then I will take the next input. After this finish 
Let's say if count equals zero, what does that mean? That means that while loop has not been executed once. That means at the beginning, the user already input a negative score. No students at all. In this case, it's not possible for me to calculate the average. So I just print out messages say there is low score entered. Okay, because I cannot calculate average. Else, I can else I can print out a message. For example, say there are count number of students. Okay. Then see out the average score is I do the calculation 1.0 multiply total score divided by count. Now I want to use 1.0 here uh, is because the total score is the integer count is the integer with low integer divided by integer will give you only integer result. Sometimes I want the average it has decimal, so I multiply 1.0 uh, first to force it the result to become a decimal value. So let us uh, compile and run the code. It is success in compile. Then let us input some uh, sample score to check. 100, 90, 80, 70, uh, 60, then negative 1. Now we look, we total have five scores. The average is supposed to be 80. Let's see if our result is correct. So there are five students. The average score is 80. It seems like we did a great job. Now let's have a quick review. So you see, the idea for this thing is I don't know how many times I will input the student score. So I must use some value to control the loop. In this case, is if I input a negative score, that means a down input. So the loop condition becomes the score greater than or equal to zero. Then in the loop body, every time I need to update two things, one thing I need to update the count of the scores. Another thing is I need to update the total scores. Finally, I need to input the next score. So it seems this well loop uh, do okay. Now, here you notice this well loop body might not be executed anytime. For example, if I rerun this code, I enter the student score as uh, negative one. If the first score is negative one, the loop condition score greater than or equal to zero will be false at the beginning. So the loop body will not be executed once at all. Now we know the count will keep to be zero. So it is so supposed to print out there is no score entered. You see? So the while loop is the loop body might not be executed anytime because the loop condition could be false at the beginning. Now then what is the do while loop? Do while loop is we want to do something first, at least once, then check the condition. If the condition is true, I will redo it. Now, this example, you actually can do it by using do while loop. Let us try here. Let us command this while loop away. How, how to do this example by do while loop. I can do. Now, when I finish, well, the score is greater than or equal to zero. As long as I input a positive score, that means I want to continue. Now, I first input a score. I do first. Then I will say, if this score is greater than or equal to zero, right? Then I will update this score, uh, the total score, total score plus equal score, and count plus plus. Now pay attention here. What what happened? 
I do input first. After that input, I need to decide if I, this input I need to use for the total score or not. So I have an if statement here. If this score is greater than or equal to zero, that means it's a legal input, it's a legal score. I add it to the total score, then increase my count by one. Then I decide if I should continue for the next score. I only continue if this input score is a legal score. Otherwise, for example, if I input a negative score, then this condition becomes false. Then the loop will, body will not be repeated. Now, you can see we will get the same result. For example, if I compile and run the program, again, I input 100, 90, 80, 70, and 60 to check my program. Oh, I did input elective one first, right? So you see there are five students, the average score is 80. I hope this video will help my students understand the loop a little bit better. If you have any questions, please email me. Goodbye.